Hello Lizzie here and today I'm going to show you how to make Oakley. Now Oakley is a downloadable pattern on my website lizziecurtis.com and this is Oakley sitting right beside me. So you're getting a full pattern with written and pictorial instructions inside. If I just open up one of the pages you'll be able to see you've got full instructions right at the beginning, cutting guides and full pictures as well. So it's a full pattern for you plus of course this wonderful video. So let me talk to you about Oakley. It's a really nice strong bag. It's a good size. It's about 18 by 14 depending on your seam allowances and how we cut because obviously we're cutting manually so you can never can tell. Um, the strap that goes all the way around is also part of the handle as well and we cut this piece out and then bind it with some bias binding. There, that's probably the only complicated part of it, the bias binding for this, because all the rest is super easy. Um, we've got uh, reverse applique on the front. We haven't done that before, so that's been that's going to be a nice new technique for you. So a bit of reverse applique on there, different fabric to underneath just to make it pop. I've used linens because it frays nicely and I really wanted the panel, the front panel to fray. I've used variegated thread throughout and I've chosen blue and I've even stitched on the green fabric in the blue just to tie it all in um, and I've actually quilted the whole thing so you're, you, end, you start up with two kind of rectangles cut into them a bit with the handle and the, and the boxy bottom but then you're going to quilt through and actually you're going to quilt through the lining as well so I don't know if you can see but that is all quilted through let's try and get the light on it a bit and also every, every seam is bound so there's no raw edges in this um, I would just I would just my piece of advice is just be careful of your sewing machine to make sure it will go through all those thicknesses I've used an 80 20 wadding so it's lovely and soft but I've used Decaville on the actual strap now you could use waistband tape so look for that um, Visaline make that and it actually naturally folds in half so look out for that but I've used these um, Decaville and I'm going to show you how I've done that because it's actually quite easy so that is Oakley really lovely pattern I think you're going to make loads of these um, and really strong as well so let's pop Oakley to one side now I've chosen to use a different colorway for the video just to make a change um, I wouldn't want to the same to be honest and I think I'm going to use this bag a lot so I'm making I've made the green one now I'm going to make the blue one so I've already done some of it um, just so it doesn't take such a long time to do the video um, and this is my blue version that's the outside fabric isn't it glorious let me show you the the lining so you've got the outer the lining and two layers of wadding in between so that's two layers for each panel so making it quite structural if you like quite sturdy but still soft and all of this quilting you're going to do now this fabric is Liberty fabric and I'll put in the description what Liberty fabric it is it's quite delicious and the same on the back as well it's both Liberty so you start off with your rectangle so let me move all of these other little bits and bobs out of the way and I've already cut out my rectangle like this and let me get it so it's right side so you can see the shape of it which is fab we've got one pattern piece here for the for the cutout you've also got a pattern piece for the heart uh, reverse applique as well so I will cut that out um, and just offer it up now this has to go into the middle of your bag so this is 18 and a half inches across so go for nine and a quarter and pop your pattern piece uh, right in the center of that and draw around with a, a chalk pen something like that and I don't know if you can see but that's what I've already done it's quite faint on camera but I think you'll be able to see plus what I've already done in preparation is actually cut out I'm sorry drawn my two inch squares on the corners and that's what's going to make our boxy bottom so if I just get my scissors in there I can actually cut this um, straight away now um, I would suggest you use scissors and not a rotary cutter because with a rotary cutter you could easily um, just you know go past the cutting edge and I don't want you to do that I want that to be really neat let's try and cut that a little bit further and just take your boxy bottoms out because we're going to stitch all this and there's no point stitching something that's just going to be cut away so again let's just cut this one out and over 
there so that's two inches square it says all this in the pattern so there's no need for you to try to remember or to worry about it so there's our boxy bottom cut out and like I said I've used my pattern piece to draw around so I'll get that out of the way and I'm going to cut this piece out now um, and then we can start stitching well I, I'll show you how to do the the measurements first for the quilting um, and while I well just before I show you that I'll talk to you about what the layers are just to make sure you're absolutely clear on what you're doing with the layers <clears throat> so here we go so this is my outer fabric here and as like I say it's Liberty and I'll give you the um, information on that but down below and underneath there I've got a layer of 80-20 wadding which is temporarily glued on because we're going to quilt this anyway and then a second layer of 80-20 wadding which again is stuck down and then my layer of well it's the lining layer it's the back layer and they're all going to be stitched together and just make sure that when you do um, stick them together um, you can pin if you like but I we're going to be drawing on this so it's it's better to stick rather than pin um, and just make sure that they don't move trim those edges so they look absolutely gorgeous now going from that center mark so again we want to measure into that center nine and a quarter inches so if I bring my ruler in and we'll measure off nine and a quarter inches oh wrong pen let's get the chalk pen and that will be my first line of stitching so we'll go from that line and so I'm just going to line this up and I'm going to make sure that the bottom of my ruler is absolutely parallel to the bottom of my bag and that because that's our first line we want that to be absolutely perfect so what we're going to do and this does take a minute or two so I'll probably do this um, and come back to you is you're just going to draw with your chalk pen that line so you can just about see that on camera yeah so then I'm going to move my ruler across now you might want to use a bigger ruler <laughs> you know I've got I have got a 24 inch ruler and it would actually be more useful but but difficult to maneuver around when I'm trying to to film so keep keeping to my 6 by 12 and then just make sure top and bottom that you've got that mark so all I'm doing is moving my ruler across onto that chalk line that I can see it um, and it's just underneath that black line where the inch is um, and just move your ruler up because as we go along it's going to get deeper and deeper as we go up there so look you can see that um, <clears throat> now you could use a hair marker if you want to um, I'd much rather have a more of a visual um, this is absolutely personal preference on whether you prefer a chalk line maybe a heat erasable pen depends on your fabric doesn't it I mean of course I've chosen dark so I'm going with a chalk pen um, but you may want to use like I say a heat erasable pen I think it's uh, very much personal preference isn't it so as I'm working along I'm trying to make sure that everything is kept parallel so a good sort of a good angle here so that's got to remain parallel all the way along that so we don't want to go off at an angle or you could actually while well, I remember <laughs> you could use a quilting guide if you've got one in your feet set for your machine um, have a little look and you could set that to one inch and then you can stitch very very quickly and easily using a quilting guide um, that comes sometimes they come with your machine sometimes you have to buy them um, but they're a really good tool to have but not everybody has them so I'm just kind of doing what everybody else would do um, and also I would recommend highly using a walking foot with when you're stitching this um, because it means you're going to get uh, all the layers moving at the same time which is perfect so I'm just going to carry on now and do the other half of this and I'll come back to you when I've done it so I've drawn all my lines I think you could probably see those okay so I'm going to start right in the middle now that's entirely up to you you can start at one side especially if you're using a walking foot it, it, all that fabric is going to stay still and you've glued most of it anyway 
so um, but I'm still going to start out of habit in the middle I'm just going to increase my stitch length to three um, we don't need it um, like regular quilting we don't need it to be um, very very tiny stitches or even very very large stitches something in between about a three is great so it's just a case now of following the lines that you've created um, I'm going to use my needle down facility to make sure I can just stop at any time and my needle doesn't move and you're just following the lines that you've drawn and these lines will come out of your fabric you mustn't worry about it and by the time you've done the quilting um, it'll it'll be worn away practically especially if you've used chalk so it's just a case I mean, if you've got a machine that breaks your thread brilliant I don't have today I'm using my older machine um, it saves on thread doesn't it I'm using my variegated thread and I'm just a little hint here I'm using variegated thread top and bottom um, you could use a matching thread if you wanted um, bear in mind that your bottom your lining fabric is also a pattern fabric and it's also quite pretty so I'm thinking let's just have variegated thread quilting inside the bag uh, as well as outside um, but like I say, you could use a matching thread. Depends what your lining is, I suppose. Um, it's, it's like every pattern. Every pattern is different, isn't it? And it, it calls for different sort of techniques and different ways. So look, I'm just quilting along my lines here. Let me just show you what I've done. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. These, these three lines here. So I'll carry on and do the whole thing and then I'll come back to you, okay? Right, just the last one to do now doesn't take long it's actually quite nice it's not very often we can go straight stitching fast but the line's drawn so it's dead easy listen if you do go a little bit wriggly please forgive yourself for going a bit wriggly okay um, right so let's just trim the threads um, because my machine this particular machine doesn't cut the threads I always end up with loads so let's just trim it because it's nice to keep everything tidy um, the other thing to consider is you could give this a good press now just to sort of bed the quilting in um, you know you don't have to it, it helps with removing the chalk as well if you give it a little spray of um, maybe some starch or some Gosh, there's another uh, liquid you can use putting on fabric, apart from water, <laughs> it'll come to me. Um, and uh, it just helps to remove the chalk marks. Um, with, with heat erasable pens, they actually, the white ghosting, which I know people talk about a lot, that will wash out. Um, I don't know if you've ever tried it. I certainly have tried it myself. And I've found that it's, it, it washes out okay. But then again, you don't always want to wash everything that you've made, especially if it's going to be a gift. So choose what you're going to use. Um, and obviously um, with a pen, you're just going to make sure you're going to stitch on the straight lines, aren't you? So let's just get all of those, put them in my Ava. So that looks absolutely gorgeous. Let's give it a quick little press. And while I'm waiting for the, the iron to heat up, we've got to talk about the um, reverse applique. Now, all the sizes of everything is in the pattern. You've no need to worry. You don't have to guess. Everything is in there. So what you need to create is a front panel. Now, I've used linen because it frays beautifully and I particularly wanted a frayed edge. Now, you don't have to. That's just what I like. Um, if you want to actually make it a neat turnover, quarter of an inch turnover all the way around, add an extra half an inch to the short side and the long side. Um, that, get, that way it gives you a quarter of an inch uh, bigger all the way around. You can turn that through and, and sort of top stitch it. Um, and then you need a smaller panel behind because we're going to cut through and we want that fabric, isn't it glorious, to show through as our reverse applique. And I've got the little heart pattern there, which is part of the pattern. Um, I, st I stuck it in with a pin so I wouldn't lose it. Um, now, the other thing to remember is that we've got, we want three hearts. So before you actually start to place things down and, and uh, stitch and cut things out, fold your little front panel in half and crease it with your iron okay and then if I put it down on my desk we'll see it better fold in that short end to the middle press 
fold in that short end to the middle and press. So just by folding it like this and having that first crease in the centre, you've ended up with the three lines. We can see that quite clearly on the overhead, those three lines. And that's where your heart's going to go. OK, so that's the next thing we need to do. So I'm going to move my lovely body bag out of the uh, out of shot there. Um, so all I'm going to do is use the template in the pattern and draw around my heart. So I'm putting the point and the V of the heart on those crease lines and I'm literally going to draw around. It's, it's a template rather than actually a pattern piece. So I'm using my heat erasable pen. Just check before, <laughs> before you go drawing. And this is actually going to be your stitch line. OK, so you're not going to stitch either side of this. You're going to stitch on that quarter inch Sorry, you're going to stitch on that line. So again, just line it up and try and make sure you get those in the middle. Um, and if I mean, the great thing about heat erasable pen, if it's not quite right when you are, you look at it, you can just iron it out and, and shift it and move it again. Um, but you might want to measure exactly right from the, the bottom. And I don't blame you for that. I mean, I could mm, have a quick look. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. <laughs> so again, just get the point of the heart and the V of the heart on that crease and just draw around your template. There we go. Just go draw around. There we go. And if you've got any gaps and you need to fill them in, then do that. That's what it's there for. So that's the heart template finished with. We don't need it anymore. So what we have is the two strips put together, that's the, the front. There's the gorgeous batik fabric on the back. And there's our heart lines. You just about see them there. And I'm actually going to stitch with my regular foot um, along those, those lines that I've drawn. So I'm going to change my foot over. Fortunately, it's fairly swift on this machine. Some machines are a little bit tricky especially with the walking foot. They, they can be monsters sometimes, can't they? And of course, I can't get mine off very easily. There we go. Is it off now? Yeah. <laughs> right, regular foot, phew. Um, I'm going to take that stitch length down a bit now because we're, we're stitching curves. So I'm stitching through both layers and I'm stitching on that drawn line. I'm going to bring it closer to me so I can see. And if I were you, I would just make sure that your needle goes straight into the centre of your, your foot, you know, where the, where the line is. Just keep an eye on that. Now take your time stitching around this. We want it to be nice and neat. Um, I'm just going to keep my needle down just for a second. I'm going to take those threads away because the last thing I want, doesn't matter about underneath so much, but I do not want any messy threads on the top. Um, I'm going to do a couple of stitches over my original stitch lines, you know, where I started. I'm just going to take that pin out and then just work my way around. So now I've got all my fabrics kind of, you know, with the stitching, it's joining all the fabrics together. I don't really need all those pins now. And so I'm just being very, very careful taking my time, pivoting my needle into my fabric, making sure I get right into the V of the heart and then just come round, take my time, pivot, just keep using that facility. That's, that's the joy uh, of, uh, of ha having a machine to do this for you is that you can use it to its full capacity. And of course, I'm using, using variegated thread. So this is making it look quite different. And obviously, you don't have to use variegated. Um, use whatever you like. But mm, I do quite like the look of it. So not a back stitch. I'm just going to go over the first couple of stitches when I started stitching. So again, just keep using the facility of the presser foot lever and the pivot 
Uh, look, you can see my hand is there the entire time. I'm just guiding the fabric into the V of the heart. I'm just going to snip that thread away because I do not want any loose threads. I want it to be as neat as I possibly can. Although, to be honest, by the time you've cut and you've um, ruffled the fabric up a little bit, or quite a lot in my case, you're not going to notice any of it. You will notice the variegated thread there. It um, does stand out. So just coming down, down to that V, so I'm just going over those first couple of stitches. And then I'm just going to whiz across to the next one. So let's see if we can speed it up a bit. Just snip those threads again. And just around the curves of the heart. And do, do you know, try to make those neat because that is something that you will notice and you'll think, oh, I should have taken a little bit longer on that. There we go. Coming around to, down to the point, finding those first, that first stitch and then just going a couple of stitches. Not bad. So just trim your threads, make it nice and neat. And on the back as well. There we go. Pop that over to one side. So here we go. I'll just take those pins out just for the moment. So there's our heart stitched. And you can see the variegated thread, the different tones pop out, don't they? So then what we need is a nice pair of sharp scissors. So I've got some nice embroidery scissors here. And you just want to be careful you don't cut through both layers. So just separate your the layers. You might want to just sort of ruffle it a little bit and, and be cruel and just cut straight into the centre and then come out. And then, you know, about a quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch maybe, um, it's all going to be ruffled. Now, I shouldn't be too precious about this. I don't want you to be absolutely perfect. I want you to really make it really rustic. Um, but I mean, don't be too extreme. Keep it around about a quarter of an inch, an eighth of an inch. You can see there look, what I've cut back. And again, just ruffle those fabrics so you're not cutting that underneath fabric. To be honest, it, not all would be lost if you did do that. You mustn't think, oh, no, I've got to do it again. Just pop a bit of uh, Visaline behind it and stick it together. Um, nobody's going to notice. You don't have to tell anybody. And don't point it out. <laughs> we, we do tend to point out, don't we? Oh, um, oh, yeah, but don't look at that bit because I made a mistake there. Don't do that. So nobody will know. There we go. And just cut into that last one. Like I say, it's about quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch, somewhere in between. Um, trim it back again as well. If you, if you know, go round it again and trim away. And uh, you can see I haven't been precious about that at all. So then if we have a look on the overhead, you can see what that looks like. <laughs> and it, it, to be honest, I wouldn't leave it like that. But what you can do is snip into this. So just snip in. And because I'm using linen, it really lends itself really well to, to fraying and to ruffling. Um, cut into the points as well. Um, and then you could get a brush on this, uh, you know, like just an, an old toothbrush or a nail brush. Um, just to help with that sort of rustic look. And if it's still, if you think this is still too wide, you know, the, the fabric is a quarter of an inch here, then cut it back again. Don't be afraid. And even when you um, stitched it onto the bag, um, you, you still could play with it and fiddle with it and cut it down and just get it so it's more sort of rustic looking. And, and to be honest, you could have a second layer. So you could have, the, we've got the red here poking through. So you could put a second layer on there and watch. <laughs> and you could have 
another cut layer and make it just a little bit um, wider so you can see all the fabrics. Don't be alarmed. Nothing is being harmed in the making of this bag. So look, that's absolutely gorgeous now. It could do with a lot more work, but we won't have time for that. What I do need to do is give it a little bit of a press so it's fairly neat to go onto my uh, bag. And then you can spend time afterwards making it really super. So I'm just going to give it a quick ruffle here. I'm really not, I, I want it to be, you know, a bit more sort of, a bit more movement in it. So get your iron in there as well. So we're making it nice and flat and we're ruffling it up as well. <laughs> that looks really nice. Okay, here we go. So there's my piece completed. So there's the front, looks good doesn't it? And there's the back. So let's bring the bag body in and I'm going to measure down from the top. I'm going to just go straight in with the pins. So it gives the instructions in the in the pattern of where you put your piece. So don't worry, we're not guessing. Um, so I'll just move that down just a wee bit. There we go. And what I am doing is lining up my centre line of my quilting, the first line we marked, the first line we stitched, to that middle crease that we first did on our little panel here. Um, and I'm just making sure that's all level. And I'll put a pin in. So don't forget, we're actually stitching through all of the layers. And we're doing the top, the, the, um, the lining, through all of our um, panels, so quite a lot of fabric. So like I said to you before, be, be aware of your capabilities of your machine. So there we are. So now that's pinned in place. I'm going to now just top stitch that. And I'm going to top stitch it about a quarter of an inch. I'm not measuring, but it's about a quarter of an inch from the, uh, from the fraying, I suppose. Um, and it should catch your panel piece underneath. So I'm going to, let's have a look at the stitch length. I'm happy with that stitch length. I am going to do a little back stitch. And if you want to, put your walking foot back on again. I'm not sure it's totally necessary, um, but you are doing multiple layers again. But because you've done all the quilting, it should be fine. And uh, I'm just moving my pins as I go. So you're going all the way around. Now, because I'm using variegated thread, which I love. When the panel's stitched on, it'll look like there's um, sort of light and light and shade, light and dark. So all the way along again. So at least uh, you'll be able to do some reverse um, applique now. If that's something that you you find quite fun, I quite like it. Not very often I do it, but I quite like it. Now mine has shifted a little bit, which is a bit disappointing. I might have to do that again, because I'm not happy with it. But for the time being, let's leave it as it is. Otherwise we'll never get done. So just trim off your ends. So maybe put that walking foot back on. And just, just give this a ruffle. Just, you know, you've already frayed it, but let's give it a little bit more of a ruffle. You get your iron in again and just get it so it's moving. I'm quite happy with that. Yep. It gives it a feeling of 3D. There's no pocket on this bag, so it might be something that you want to add. Maybe the inside, maybe the other side. So there's our panel in place. Oh, I love it. So now it's a case of putting the bag together and we've got lots of bits and bobs for that. So let's start off with the bag, what do we call it? The bag grip, the bag section, the handle, the handle section, the handle part. So I've got some bias binding here, which I've made from the lining fabric. Um, and it's about 20 inches long. So I'm just literally going to cut it in half. And all of the binding is the same width, except this one is biased because we're going round a corner. So I'm just cutting. So make one length, just saves a bit of time. 
So because it's bias, I really want to do this one bit at a time. So oh, there, there's my bias. And I've got those raw edges going into the middle, as you'd expect from bias. And I'm actually going to open that up and I'm going to stitch. It's actually half an inch seam allowance now. I'm going to stitch in the fold of my bias, okay? And that's a great guide because you can't, you can't go wrong. So I'm actually stitching it to the front of my bag first, around the handle, and then I'm going to flip it over. So um, let me pin that so you can see. I, I wouldn't normally pin, to be honest. But don't forget, this is a half an inch seam allowance. Now I've joined my binding, and you'll see the join in a sec. And that's perfectly fine. I actually started off with, um, I think it was a 10 inch square of my lining and I cut my bias using just a little 10 inch square. I only needed a little bit, so I didn't want to cut a great big piece. So look, there we are. You can see that I've actually pinned where the fold is. So that fold is now pinned to my bag, okay? So I'm gonna stitch kind of in the ditch, I suppose. Right. And like I say, it's a half an inch seam allowance. I have to take the pins out. I cannot stitch with pins in. So just make sure that's all lined up. Little back stitch to hold. And then just work your way. Now I am going to take my pins out, guys, because I don't use pins. Not if I can help it. Uh, I find them to be a hindrance. So I'm, I'm not stretching. I do not stretch this bias. This bias will find its own way. And because it's bias. So just follow the line of your handle. So a quick mention about my gold club if you haven't joined already there's no time like the present just pop to my website find the link that says gold members sign up here and then you have access to my facebook weekly events which is absolutely amazing my girls love it and of course you get the free patterns as well so if you want more information there is actually a video on youtube that you can have a little look at I don't know what to call it. Handle grip, handle space. Name uh, words on a postcard, please. So just follow that all around. Now this um, this next part, <clears throat> we'll do the other one. But this next part is you have the choice. So that's that's attached. There we go. You can see. Let me just trim it. Now I always trim it, you know, a good half an inch bigger than I need because you can bet anything you like when you turn it, you, you cut it on the wrong angle and, and you, um, you know, you mess up. So basically what you're going to do, in fact, let me just show you on the overhead because it'd be far easier. So let me turn it so it's the right way around for you. So there is our bias stitched in. Okay, where's the thread there? That's it. So there's our bias stitched in beautifully around there. And it always looks a bit strange when it's like this. Um, um, but it's all beautifully neat and tidy. OK, it's going to make a really super job. And then all you're going to do is fold this over. OK, and it, it's like a facing in a way, isn't it? And just fold that under. And what you could do, in fact, let me use some clips. Now, you see, I would hand stitch this without a shadow of a doubt. I would hand stitch this. Um, but of course, you may want to pop this under the machine and top stitch it. Depends how brave you feel. Um, but if you're anything like me, I do quite like a nice neat job. Oh, I'd rather hand stitch. Anyway, there is our bias tape now folded over. Absolutely gorgeous. And if we turn over the lining, look how that disappears. It absolutely <laughs> disappears in, into the rest of the bag. It doesn't really look fab, but you can see that's not quite lined up. And this is where I wouldn't trust myself. Now, what you could do, and actual fact, this is a good idea. Let's do it. 
because I'm pretty sure I say it in the pattern, is to trim this away. So get your scissors in and do be careful that you don't snip the wrong thing. <clears throat> and just get in there and trim some of this bulk away because your bias binding will absolutely lie beautifully if you do that. And like I said, I'm pretty sure I say that in the pattern. So let's stick to the pattern, guys. <laughs> OK, just be careful where you're cutting. Keep an eye on things. Don't rush it like me. OK, so let's fold that again. See how we get on. Now that is so much easier. Why didn't I do that before? Get your clips. And really, what you're doing is you're marrying up the folded edge of the bias to the stitch line that you can see. So uh, you're not going to be able to see because of the fabric, but there is a stitch line going along there. And that bias tape is just kissing the edge of the stitching. Like that. Beautiful. Look at that. Gorgeous. So now, you know what, I would hand stitch it. I'm not going to on this video, but I would hand stitch it. I'm actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to top stitch along my bias binding now, and that will actually secure that down. So look, I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'm going to repeat it on the other piece of the bag. So join me back in a couple of minutes because I'm going to stitch this nicely, do the other one, and then we're good to go on the side seams. OK, so I've put the bias binding around both bag handle parts. Still haven't come up with a name yet. But anyway, it's where the handle goes there so you can grab it, go shopping. So I put the bias on there and on the back it always looks gorgeous because obviously it's a matching fabric. So it's going to be almost invisible. So the next thing to do is to stitch together our sides, both sides and our bottom. And obviously right sides together. Let's get it right. Right sides together. Now, of course, you might want to use your quilting clips to hold that together or use your pins if you want to. Um, I'm just going to go straight straight sort of for it. So it's from top to bottom and then across the bottom here and then across the side. When we've done that, we then need to bind those sides. OK, we need to bind those seams so they're really, really neat. So again, I've cut some binding using the lining fabric so it's almost invisible again. The same width as we did before, but this time it does not have to be biased. This is going on a straight seam. So I'm going to stitch the seams together first and then I'm going to stitch the bias on. Uh, sorry, the, the binding. All right. Now you could put your walking foot back on. And now I would do a generous quarter inch seam allowance here. I'm also going to increase my stitch length to three again. And just make sure that all your seams are lying straight. Like I say, pop, pop your walking foot on. I'm just easing that top fabric through myself. There's no need to um, zigzag this at all because we're using the binding. Little back stitch there. Break your threads if you want to. Now we're going to stitch the bottom seams together. Again, make sure they're lined up. A lot of layers going on here again because we used that double wadding, didn't we? So it's quite thick. So again, just ease that fabric through. Make sure that these two edges meet and then you'll know that you're on the right track. Now I'm not pulling this fabric, I'm literally, I'm just guiding, I'm holding it. So it's a generous quarter of an inch. This is such a thick piece of work that to try to do a quarter of an inch and accurate, it's just a waste of time. So some of the seams are half an inch, that biases, and we'll come to another half an inch shortly. But this is more just a generous quarter inch. So I'm going up the other side now. Again, I'm just going to get those top pieces to meet. Make sure my sides are meeting beautifully. And if you need to trim, because they're slightly moved, just trim them. 
it's a big bag it can take a bit of trimming so there's our sides uh, created and inside it obviously it's beautiful that is you can hardly notice the difference between the stitching and the quilting so it's great that the, the mathematics have worked so with one of your binding pieces and I do give you the exact measurements of what you need all you're going to do is wrap it round so you've got your half inch turn in so just fold those in so your raw edges are meeting down the middle and you're just going to wrap it around now I wouldn't even try to stitch this uh, on the edge in actual fact a zigzag would be a good idea and so I'm going way in probably a good eighth of an inch away from the fold so it's a, so it's going to catch both sides um, but like I say you could use a zigzag just to make sure again pin this together you know don't don't do what I'm doing uh, I'm doing this so it's quick for you on the video so you know how the whole bag gets put together but you take your time um, and I, like I said I'm just wrapping that around but my my actual seam my actual stitching is is quite a way in because I want to make sure I catch the back and the front of this tape, this binding, and it is inside. So as long as you've bound those um, seams, it's gonna be beautifully neat. And a zigzag would work brilliantly with this because it, it just means you're going to catch the binding back and front without a shadow of a doubt. Right, so I'm gonna trim my binding. Yours will be just about perfect and then just come right down to the bottom that's great just check not too bad and then we're going to stitch along the bottom so again the same technique so we're just wrapping our binding around it's those first couple of stitches holding this is what's going to make the difference so again, I'll do a little back stitch just to make it sure it holds. And then just fold that all under. And like I said, I'm stitching a good, a good eighth of an inch away from the edge of my fabric. And again, a walking foot, you know, just keep that walking foot on there. I mean, you, you it'd have been difficult to do the hearts, I think, with the walking foot on. I'll give it a go. I've just come slightly off there, so hopefully it's still okay. Because all we want is to make sure that the raw edges are covered. And because we're using the lining fabric, it's very forgiving. So there we are. Let's just trim those threads. And I don't think I've got enough. Oh, yeah, I've got enough to do the sides as well. So let's come up that side. And again, you can always trim these seams down if you want to. You know, I said a generous quarter of an inch. Trim them down again. So you've got a nice sort of fold over of the fabric. Again, just tuck that all in. And just make sure that that's all beautifully bound. It's a nice, neat way of finishing off your edges. And, and just take your time with it all. Just take your time. There's no rush. You don't have to go as fast as me. coming up to the top and hopefully we've cut we caught all that binding back and front and if we haven't don't worry about it it is the lining so you can go back in there and stitch again if you, oh I ran out of bobbin I'll have to go and fill that up so there we are so apart from the fact I'm just got to finish that last couple of inches there's our binding on look how beautiful it looks it looks really neat so go ahead and do that I'll come back to you in a minute when I fill my bar bobbing up so I've finished the binding on the side seams and the bottom seam as well and you can tell with the lining 
using the same fabric lining and binding it looks great doesn't it but the next thing we need to do is box this these bottom parts off here so we've got the little cutouts if you remember so it's it's pulling those points out so not the binding points the points that we've cut into the bag pull them together and just stitch across from this fold to this fold right across now what you need to do is nest those seams and the reason for that is you've got binding on here as well now so just be mindful of your machine just take it easy um, and you're just going to stitch across now I'm going to bind these I've got a spare little binding and it's in the pattern of how to bind those um, but you may at this point want to zigzag because of the amount of fabric that's there it's again being respectful of your machine seeing how it'll go it should be okay but it, far better that I sort of kind of pre-warn you of the thickness of the fabric because we've used double uh, wadding um, you could, of course, use like um, a bosal foam, you know, like a, a foam interfacing, um, which is obviously um, easy to stitch. Um, but again, that's up to you. You see what your machine is capable of. But even with this little workhorse, I'm just taking my time going over those seams. I mean, they're quite squidgy, but again, be respectful. So across that seam there, so that boxes that off, we just need to trim it so it's nice and neat. There we go. And just trim those threads. And then we're going to do the same for the other boxy bottom there. So just pop your hand in there, split those seams open. And where your, whichever direction this bottom seam is going, make sure you follow that so it does lie flat, it's not twisted. So I'll just make sure that they nest nicely, push that bottom seam over to where I want it to be. Again, a generous quarter of an inch and over those seams, take your time. Uh, and I mean, most domestic machines should be fine with that, but just erring on the side of caution. So just trim your threads. Again, if you've got a thread trimmer on your machine, what a joy. I just chose to use this little workhorse today. But I mean, not everybody has got that facility, have they? So it's good to show. It's not a magic thing where the threads don't just suddenly cut themselves. It's nice to show it sometimes. So if you're going to bind these, so obviously you can zigzag that nice and neatly. But we could bind this as well so the the binding on the seams sides and bottom all match you know it all looks lovely and neat not that ever anybody's going to see it so cut yourself a piece of binding as it was before same measurements and you're just folding over that top raw edge about about a half an inch um, um, I wouldn't say a quarter of an inch it's just too too little um, and again you're going to fold that in half and you're just going to literally encase that seam in there. So there's my piece, I folded it in half. I'm just going to pop it over the top and then I'm going to stitch along there just like I did before. But of course, don't forget all of that thickness and just be mindful. It's always the starting off that is a little bit tricky. So you, I, I wouldn't say pin it even, maybe even tack it yeah I know <laughs> really now my machine is just sitting still on there it's all right now so you could use a leader piece of fabric where you just start stitching on the fabric and then you go on to your project or use um what are they called a seam jumper piece of plastic that you pop under your foot to lift that foot up um, you could use one of those and I have done that before now again the same principle applies so you're not going right on that fold of the binding you're not going on the edge I'm just going to trim my fabric back so I've got a half an inch play to fold over on the end folding that over again and a generous sort of eighth of an inch there we go and then a back stitch Again, trim those threads. 
Okay, so it needs a little bit of the threads trimming there, which I'll do a little bit later. But that has bound that corner piece. So when that's tucked inside the bag, it's really neat. So we'll quickly do the other end and then we'll put the, the strap on that goes around the, 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 the sort of top of the bag, makes the handle. Um, and it's really stiff. Like I said before, I've used um, Decaville Light. Um, you might find an equivalent in your country it's a very very stiff interfacing and um, like I said before there is a product that Visaline do which maybe Pelon does I'm just thinking of what's available in the US actually um, and it's it's for dressmaking it's for going on the waistbands of skirts and I think it's called waistband waistband stabilize or stiffening and actually when I was dressmaking years and years ago I actually use that an awful lot. Kind of takes me back a bit, actually. There is a bin there. Actually, there isn't. It slipped off, but I'm, I'm going to tell you there's a bin there. So again, I'm just cut off my binding to about a half an inch longer, folding that in and then neatening up the, the edge, the end of that binding. And just going over that again like i said about an eighth of an inch if you try to stitch on that fold well you uh, you would miss <laughs> unless you stitch one half and then hand stitch the other half um you know it's such a a tricky bit because there's so many layers right there we go so that's the other binding piece put on so if we turn this right side out now we haven't seen this for ages have we seems like ages so what you've got a really substantial bag here it's lovely and strong and um, with all that binding in there it's going to make it super strong and also incredibly neat as well and it's lovely to have all that quilting going all the way through i've never had so many threads in my entire life i'm going to get the other machine out <laughs> there we go let's try and get all these bits off of it yeah, I think it's from the fraying as well. <laughs> there we go. Right, here we go. So there's the body of the bag done. Doesn't it look glorious with those hearts? And I think I'm going to cut into that a bit more. So now we need to do the top banding. OK, that's the handle part. But what you're going to do, and this is really weird, you've got to make a bridge. You've got to make a bridge between this part and this part. Now in the pattern piece, in the first pattern I did, I actually just stitched with the, with the facing that I've got. I stitched, I kept on stitching along fresh air, if you like. Um, and I didn't, hadn't, obviously I didn't join them until I came to this side. But what I'm, what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to stop here. I'm going to measure it so it's really a nice, because you don't want this to gape. You want the, the binding to be exactly the right size. Um, so I think we need to take it off pin it, make sure it's nice and flat and keep on stitching. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Now, I'm going to speak to you about this, what I've done here, because in the instructions I make it fairly clear, but I want you to be clear about it. What I've done is I've cut two pieces of the Decaville light and one piece, they're both an inch wide. This piece is uh, three inches. So one piece I've actually stuck on, that's been ironed on, that's permanently now pressed on there, and that's given me a lovely, lovely um, front piece to my, my banding. I've then got a gap, you can just see that gap there, and then I've got my second piece, and that's glue side up, because what I've done is I've actually neatened off the edge that's gonna all go on the inside of the bag, ready for hand stitching or top stitching, and so the glue part is actually facing me and, and the hem, the hemline, the seam line has been pressed onto that. So that's already attached. So this bit isn't attached like that because the glue is facing up, but the hem you can see has been glued onto that and it's kind of loose. Whereas this is actually stable. Now the idea of that is, and I've got my seam allowance here of half an inch. So I'm gonna be stitching against my Decaville here. I'm gonna be stitching along here as I put it on, it's a bit like putting a waistband on a skirt. And then once that's stitched, that folds over beautifully because we've left that gap between the Decaville. And if I just get that positioned correctly, it folds like that and it's a beautiful finish. 
Um, and like I say, you've got it um, cut to size thereabouts. I think I've given you an extra inch or two to play with. So let's start off with the end. Now, um, don't, don't start anywhere near your handles and don't start near a seam. So you've got, I don't know, maybe five inches of where to start stitching. And that's, that's what, what I suggest you do. So sort of halfway point between the side seam and the, your, where your bridge starts, if you like. So about, about here. And you're going to fold that first part in. So where we've, let me show you this way. So you're going to fold that in like that. You will iron it if you want. And then you're going to start stitching just there. OK, so if I hold it onto my bag like that and show you on the overhead, that's how it looks. I can get my fingers out of the way. Let me put a clip in there so you can see. That's how it looks. OK, and you're going to start stitching just there, just there. And you're going to go all the way around. But like I say, we're going to stop when we come to each bridge because we want it to be right. Um, now, do I want my... I'm going to take my free arm off my table, make it a free arm, see if that uh, helps me. So, fold that edge in a quarter, um, sorry, half an inch. You've got a half inch seam allowance. Um, do a little back stitch and then just make your way um, around your bag. And, and, and where you come to your seam here, just feel which way your binding is going and then try and keep it all the same way. And then we're just doing that half inch seam allowance. Be mindful of when you come to your seams. So just take it easy. Don't push that machine of yours. Make sure you've got a new needle in. So when we come up to the bridge, which we are now, I'm going to come up and I'm going to stop. I'm going to do a back stitch. I might just do a couple of back stitches there. Take it out of my machine. So let's let's see if we can do this so you can see beautifully. So there is the band. It's better if I do it on the overhead. There's the band that I've just stitched. Okay, if we fold it that way, you can see that that's where I stop stitching because that's the start of my bridge across here to this side. So what I'm going to do is lay that nicely and flat on my desk. And obviously if you want to measure and pin and all the rest, please do that. But I'm just happy with pulling the bag, make nice and straight, pulling my waist, waistband, listen to me, pulling my ba bag band nice and straight. And then I'm going to pin or clip, whichever you prefer. And then I'll start stitching where that bridge starts there. In the first one I did, I actually kept on stitching all the way along here. And you can see where I've joined actually. There's a product out there that you can join your interfacing together. So I'm just going to start stitching there. So we'll do that again when we get to the other side. And that way you should have your handles, because they should be straight. Um, and you can make them um, a little bit more curvy if you want to, but you must add on the appropriate uh, amount um, in, in regard to the measurements. Because I've done, I've measured this for a straight bridge. Straight handle, straight bridge. Just be careful going over those seams, take your time. It's a lot of fabric. So just coming all the way around to the, the other side of your bag. And I'm going to stop. Nice little back stitch just to really secure that. Because if you think about it, there's a lot of pressure going on those handles. So again, just going to lay this down flat. I'm going to get a pin. Like I say, you can measure this if you want. But laying it flat is pretty good. Lay it flat and get your fabric to come over the bridge and then just pin it in place. 
So what you'll find is when you come back to, let's, let's do this on the overhead so you can see. So when you come back, so this is where we're going to start stitching again. Look, my little bridge is under there. My little start of the handle is under there. That's, so that's where I'm going to start stitching. And I'm going to come along here. Now where we started, let's just tuck that in. Where we started, we've got a lovely, lovely neatened edge. And our flap just going to go over the top. And to be honest, you could cut that back. OK, you could cut that back. <clears throat> well, I don't know, a good, a good inch off of this, this part here. So let's just do that because we don't need all that fabric. But we do need a little bit. So, you know, see how you go. So just lining that all up, all we're going to do now is stitch from here to just beyond that piece there. And don't worry, there's still plenty of Decaville under there to hold that together. So let's pop it under the machine. And if you do start stitching before, you know, where your bias is, don't, don't worry. Because it's, it's not structural, so it'll be fine. So I'm just running my... There we go. And I've just tucked my fabric into that nice fold that we did. Little back stitch. And if you need to cut your Decaville away so you haven't got a double layer going on, all that sort of thing. Because it depends on you, on whether you sort of move your fabric, you stretch your fabric, if you do a more of a sort of a curvy bridge handle, um, as to whether that's going to... I mean, at the moment, that's sitting perfectly on top of each other. So then all you're going to do, can you see how that looks now? You're just going to flip that in. There we go. And you'll want to get your quilting clips on this. So let, let's just do one piece at a time here. So if you've ever um, done a skirt with this method, with this type of thing, then um, you, you'll know how this works. That all of the seams just just sit beautifully together and you've already got a really neat folded edge. So I'm putting clips across the bridge. I won't be able to do that with the rest of the bag. So let's just do that. I'll flip it over. There we go. Um, and because it because we've used Ecoville, it's quite thick. I, I, would, I wouldn't like to put a pin in there, to be honest. It'd be a bit, a bit of a struggle. And just tuck that in. Here we go. There we go. And then all of this will fold over nice and neatly. Let's just get that last little bit in. That's it. And let's tuck that in. And it does naturally want to do it because we've done the where the two pieces of Decaville meet. There's a little tiny hairline gap and it naturally wants to fold there. So just let it do its thing. So now it's all folded in. We can actually top stitch that all together. So let's keep that folded. So I would start on a piece that you know is folded in the right place. So you can see how that's that's looking. So I've clipped the edges together there. And if you want to, you can try and get a pin in there as well. <clears throat> so I'm just popping that under my needle. And I'm going to stitch a quarter of an inch away from the seam line. And then what I did with my first bag, I actually top stitched again along the top. So just keep your eye on those bottom seams there. Like I say you might want to try and pin this, but it, it's quite tricky with the Decaville. You could use um, like sticky quilting tape. That would be quite good. Or you could hand stitch. Hand stitch first and then top stitch. That's a safe, really safe way of making sure 
that all your layers are behaving because your seam will still want to poke out which mine is so desperately wanting to do yeah i think hand stitching would be a good idea right so when we come to the bridge it's quite easy <laughs> And because all our seam allowances were half an inch, by doing a quarter inch top stitching, you're easily catching all those layers. So the only problem you've got now is where we've joined. And of course you could easily hand stitch this or you could use your quilting tape. So let's just make sure all our layers, our seams are sitting inside. I'm not sure they are. <laughs> Got a mind of their own. I'm just taking it steady there because that's over the join. So once you're past that, then you can you're good to go. It's just tucking that seam in. I'll check this afterwards just to make sure that I have caught it. Because <clears throat> if I haven't, it will come undone. Let's have a look. Right. That's it. So again, just tucking the seam in underneath the decoville over those side seams be careful just make sure your machine can take it oh thought we nearly had a disaster then it's okay and then across the bridge back to where we started. There's just one little bit I will check. Okay. Well, that's not too bad. So when I say not too bad there's a little bit of the seam showing but what I'm going to do just to save a bit of time is that gosh all these threads I'm going to do that top row of um, top stitching because it really does make a difference. Uh, just I'm not doing a back stitch because it's quite noticeable so it's just a case of just going around the top as neatly as you can all the way around and of course this will catch in the other part you know where you Join the seams together, so let's tuck that in. I'll be getting the other machine out now. So just neaten all your threads, get them all cut. I'm going to have to go in and give it a haircut. Anyway, there is Oakley made. So let's see the front. Looks lovely, doesn't it? Looks great. Carry handles there, really strong because we've used the Decaville light. Inside is beautiful. Can you see all those... Um, Seams are bound, so it's lovely and neat. Lovely strong handle. A little bit of uh, applique at the front, so reverse applique because we cut into it. There's a nice strong shopper bag 
I wouldn't I would be most happy taking that out and about with me so there we are that's Oakley I hope you enjoy making it uh, don't forget it is a download full pattern and tutorial on my website lizzycurtis.com and I hope you make loads <laughs>